What's up everybody, it's Austin here from Make Pop Music and Austin Hall Audio and Visual, and we are back with another tutorial this week. And for this week, we're gonna be covering something that we haven't done extensively on this channel, and that is writing a better chorus for your song. So we're gonna be going over five tips that you can use to help you write a better chorus, and this will work in anything from, uh, you know, pop ballad all the way to a rock anthem. These are just five kind of key tips and key kind of focal points that I think that you should keep in mind when you're writing a chorus, no matter what the style or no matter what the parameters are. Everything that we're gonna be talking about is super subjective in terms of actual theme and just taste and style but just keep in mind these five things when you're working on your song and hopefully it'll help you come along a little bit easier in this video we're gonna be covering stuff like finding the lyrical theme we're gonna be covering how to actually pick what style you want your hook to be and then we're gonna be filling it in with some lyrics and some melodies and some rhythms and I'm gonna be writing the chorus right alongside of all of you so if you have any questions let us know in the comments below and we'll try to answer those but other than that let's actually go ahead and hop into the dot and let's look at the five key factors when you're writing a chorus and let's start working on this actual chorus. Now we're actually in the DAW, let's go ahead and talk about the first step. And before we actually can really hop into any steps, I guess I should kind of show you guys what we have so far so you can kind of hear the verses that we're working with, and then we'll kind of build a chorus off of that. So there's just a quick little demo I made for the purposes of this video, and uh, I've got a, a quick little verse right here. It's late July, I told myself a thousand times to let you That's gonna be where the chorus comes in. We have some space to work with. Now we can actually go ahead and talk about the first tip. So the first thing that I like to keep in mind when I'm writing a chorus, especially if I've already got a verse and the chorus instrumentals already pretty fleshed out, is really determining the style of chorus that we're gonna have. And you might be asking what that means. And when I think about style, I'm thinking about big picture stuff. I'm not thinking about specific melodies or specific rhythms. It's more so just kind of making that conscious decision of, do I want something super wordy? Do I want something super lengthy? Do I want something that's basically going to funnel around one word? Do I want phrases? Where is the story going to be building off of? And, you know, there's a bunch of different songs that kind of use each one of those aspects. And uh, there's not really any right or wrong answer, but really making sure that you can kind of determine what the purpose of that chorus is going to be before you start writing it will save you so much time and so much headache kind of going back and forth. So what we can do is we can kind of listen to this song and just see what we need to be doing and we'll kind of make those big picture decisions and then we'll hop into step two. So right now, we have... So I'm definitely hearing something a little bit more wordy. It's not gonna be super, super wordy. Like I don't want anything like a hip hop verse or anything like that. But I also don't want something super lengthy and just kind of drawn out. Those tend to work a little bit better for ballads. And also if you hear, there's not a ton of stuff happening instrumentally in this. So we really have the room where we can kind of mess with it a bit more rhythm with that vocal rather than just having something that's gonna be super lengthy, super sustained. I think we have a lot of room that we can kind of work with a counter melody. So that's gonna kind of, kind of determine that. So we know that we're going to be doing something a little bit wordier. Let's go ahead and see if there's anything that we can kind of figure out structurally for this. So I know that this song is in a key that I pretty much have full control over. I can go above or below where we have this pre-chorus. And we'll talk about that a little bit more with the melody, but I definitely want something a little bit higher in my range. So once we start working with the melody, we are gonna be doing something a bit higher. So we know that it's gonna be a little bit wordy. We know that it's gonna be a little bit higher in my range, but it's not gonna be super, super like staccato-y, da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da. 
like I said, once you just kind of make these decisions before you actually hop in, it'll just kind of save you a little bit of time later. All right, so now that we've kind of made up those big picture things with kind of how we want to structure that chorus and what we want to do, we know that we're not just going to do some na na nas. We know that we're not just going to have some kind of instrumental drop. We know that we're not going to do something super, super sustained um, because there's not really any lead elements that need to take over here. So once we kind of get those decisions out of the way, we can actually start working on writing the chorus and that's going to lead us to step two and that's going to be figuring out a melody so what i'll do is i'll pull up this verse vocal so we can see exactly kind of where it's sitting we kind of have an a, ver a, a verse and a b verse right here so the a verse is super kind of drawn out there's not really a lot happening at all it's late july i told myself a thousand times to let you go so as you can see, we're in E major, and this is kind of floating around the three to the five to the two to the one. Um, and it's kind of moving all over the place. It's got a little bit more dynamic than the B part that we're gonna go into. So for the chorus, I know that I'm definitely gonna want to do something a bit uh, melodically different than this. And then we go into this B part where we're basically kind of pedaling on that E note. So we're pedaling on the one and then we just go up to that two uh, kind of towards the end of the phrase. So it's really nice when you have a verse that kind of works out like this because the first part of the verse is uh, kind of melodically dynamic. We are floating between three or four different notes here and there, and uh, the rhythm is a little bit more unconventional. And then in this, this is super sustained out, so rhythmically we're kind of losing any uh, momentum we have, which can kind of give us a little bit more room for that chorus. And then melodically, we're really just kind of pedaling on one note with an extra little second note there. So that's going to leave us a ton of space to actually step it up from there. So I know that in the chorus, we're gonna probably do a little bit melodically less than the first part, but definitely more than the first part. And we'll probably start with something around this E note um, or even this yeah, F sharp. All right, so the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna actually write the melody for it. So I'm gonna pull up a piano so you guys can kind of follow along because um, I'm not able to route in like a vocal mic through my computer. It's just coming through the lav mic on my shirt. So let's go ahead and pull up something right here. And then what we'll kind of do is we'll kind of mess around with some different notes. So you know that we're in the key of E major, so that kind of gives us a lot to play with. So we've got those notes, and that's if we don't want to kind of break out, which for a pop song, I'm normally not going to break out of that key and do anything, you know, super experimental. So let's go ahead and get this leveled so we can kind of play over it. So what I typically like to do is I'll just pull up a piano and kind of play around with some other little uh, riffs and melodies. So again, like I said, I really like starting on that E note because then we can either go up and kind of build that and kind of crescendo that chorus, or we've got room to run that back down and it gives us a little bit of room to resolve that later. So. So we're kind of playing around with that. Let me kind of finesse that just a little bit more. Like that that and kind of what i was talking about in tip one figuring out that we want it to be a little bit more wordy that kind of keeps me from doing the that'll just keep me from doing that stuff because i don't feel like that's going to carry enough weight with such a kind of stripped back instrumental in the of the night. let's do it one more time Cool. 
so we've got something to start there. So we've got. Maybe we could do something like that. And that just leaves us on those three notes. So I think we've got plenty of room to kind of experiment and that leaves a bunch of room open for a second verse to not really step on the entire key. So now I'm pretty happy with that first part. Now we just got to figure out what to do on that last little section. So we've got... I kind of like that. Cool. So I really like that because that that kind of gets repetitive if we were to do that four times. So kind of breaking that up with that last little section uh, will let us go back into that. So we've got E. So it just kind of pedals on that. And then we're going up to F sharp and then up to G sharp and then running it back down. So and then it's going from E to G sharp to F sharp. So and that's kind of breaking up that rhythm. So it's not sort of that da 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 da. It's not like right on those 16th notes. And I think that that'll add a lot of variation. I definitely don't want to fill the second half up. We'll probably either delete that or save that for a post chorus or some kind of extra little drop later in the song. But right now, I really don't think that we need to fill up more than 20 seconds with a, with a hook. So I think that I'm pretty happy with that melody. Let's move on to step number three, where we're actually going to figure out the lyrical theme before we actually go in and write these lyrics. Uh, because basically, if you can go in with kind of a clear state of mind and know exactly what you want to do, a lot of the time you'll get to that end result a little bit quicker. And now we have a melody to fill that in. So I'm going to minimize this so we can kind of type up as we play along with this. And we've got that melody. So it's going to be the so let's see what we've already got so we've got it's late july i told myself a thousand times to let you go i'm holding on to something that was never strong enough to hold um so right here super simple rhyme scheme we've got an a an a a b and then we've got a c a C, and then we're back to a B. So pretty simple on the rhyme scheme. Nothing super crazy. And it's gonna be just enough to kind of give us a little bit of room to work from that. So we've got A, A, B, C, C, B. And then we're gonna move on to, I'm just gonna call this A again. Well, no, you know what, let's keep it going. So we've got D right here. So reasons, Cleveland. I've been searching for the reasons that you moved back home to Cleveland. Yeah, you packed your shit and took an early flight. So we're on to E. Maybe I'm just overthinking. But I, all I picture is, oh, I guess I missed that when I wrote that earlier. But all I picture is you leaving when you walked out in the middle of the night. So we're back to E. So these are kind of floating around the same thing. So now we just need to figure out what we're going to do for the rhyme scheme and then the kind of lyrical theme for the actual chorus. So we've got, it's late July, I told myself a thousand times to let you go. Okay. I'm holding on to something that was never strong enough to hold. So we know that this is definitely like a post breakup song from the verses that we're working with. It looks like they have already made their mind up, they've left. Uh, so there's a couple things that we could do for the chorus. We could either write lyrics about reminiscing on the times that we had with them. We could kind of expand on this uh, story of them actually leaving, or we could kind of draw it back and do more of a personal reflection of how you're feeling now that they have left. So those are kind of the three scenarios that immediately come to my mind. 
And, uh, you know, depending on what you're going through or whatever your writing style is, one of those may make a little bit more sense. But normally I'll just kind of take one of them and then run with that. So I don't really want to do reminiscing on the good times because this is not a personal song to me whatsoever. So filling that in might be a little bit more difficult. I don't really want to uh, keep on telling the story because I don't like when songs are just straight up narration, especially when they're such a relatable subject. Like if you're going to have a narrative song, then tell an entire story, but I think that this is just a little bit too broad strokes to focus on narration, and then I think just the whole thing will get a little bit corny and kitschy, and it'll just kind of not really go anywhere. So right now, I want to kind of start reflecting on myself, because that's what we're kind of doing here. This is like a self-reflection, and then we break away from that to actually tell the story. So I kind of want to go back to the self-reflection. So I know that we're going to do... So, I'm thinking for the rhyme scheme, we're going to want to do, we're going to want to rhyme. Let's see. And then we're going to break away from that. So we know that we're going to want the rhyme scheme to kind of start a new rhyme and then that's going to continue through the first three lines that kind of share that parallel uh melody so so those last words will rhyme and then we're going to break away from that rhyme and from that melody and from that rhythm so Doing something like that where you keep it very parallel and then on the last one you break away from every aspect of it is going to keep it fresh in the listener's ears where it's still simple enough to have an earworm and to be you know easily understood by everybody because we've got three kind of repeating structures back to back to back. But we're going to break away from that just to give them a little bit of breath before we then come back in. So we're going to repeat basically the same thing, but I kind of want to pick a different end word to rhyme because I don't want six rhyming words in that. For one, that's going to be hard to write. Uh, and then for two, it might just sound a little bit Dr. Susie. So we've got F, 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 G. So now we're going to go to, let's do H, 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 I. So if you're not familiar with what I'm doing with, with writing down all these letters, this is just writing out a rhyme scheme, which if you've ever had like a poetry class or an intro to English class, you might've seen. Uh, basically it's going to be like every time that a word rhymes, you're going to put any word that would rhyme with that in the same letter category. So like July and times, those both have that long I. So they're going to just be an A and then go, go doesn't really rhyme with anything. And then holding on and strong, that's going to have that kind of soft O. So those are going to be C and then hold is going to rhyme with that initial go. So we're going back to that B. So when you see me labeling stuff like this, don't get super, super confused. It's more so just kind of categorizing those as kind of bodies together. Now we kind of have the rhyme scheme and lyrically we know what we're going to be doing. So let me say, let's see, share a self expression. And I'm just going to categorize that so we don't kind of lose that when we go on to our next tip, which is going to be actually filling it in with words. So now we've got the melody, we've got the structure, we've got the rhyme scheme, and we know exactly what we want it to be about. Now it's just about filling in that story with actual cohesive words. All right, so let's actually get these lyrics underway. So you'll see that I have Rhyme Zone pulled up. You can use Rhyme Zone. There's a couple others that are free. Uh, it's always just nice to have something where, especially if you know that your end rhyme is going to be kind of in the same spot, you can easily just pop in that word and then figure out a couple things and that might kind of lead you in one narrative direction or another. So let's go ahead and start off with the first line. So immediately what comes to my head is, I think I'm a little obsessed because we're talking about somebody who has left, right? So let's just kind of weigh in on that kind of over obsession about why they left, what they did. We even know right here that they left in the middle of the night without any like real actual rhyme or reason. And we see right here that they've been thinking about it. So I think this is going to tie in super well. So I think I'm a little obsessed. And now let's just actually find an M rhyme for that. I think I'm a little obsessed. And I'm always pretty much going to do near rhymes because we're really just looking for one kind of syllable to rhyme, especially when we can kind of enunciate words differently. I think I'm a little obsessed. So we just need to find something that rhymes with that one line. I think I'm a little obsessed. Let's do, I think I'm a little obsessed. Let's do, I can't 
get you out of my head. So good example of how a near rhyme is definitely going to be good enough. So we've got this head right here and I'm gonna start highlighting stuff because now we're actually working in the part of the song that you came to this video for. So we'll kind of rhyme these in rhymes right here. I think I'm a little obsessed. I can't get you out of my head. Let's do... There's best right here. So we could do like, I always gave you my best. Uh, I couldn't give you my best. Uh, I think I'm a little upset. I can get you out of my head. Let's do, honestly, I'm trying my best. And then what we're gonna do right here is we're gonna do a kind of technique where you're gonna run one line into the next to kind of finish telling the story that that line wasn't really done with. So I think I'm a little obsessed. I can get you out of my head. Honestly, I'm trying my best. So we have two complete thoughts and then one thought that's not complete, but it's gonna be running into this kind of standalone line right here. So I think I'm a little obsessed. I can get you out of my head. Honestly, I'm trying my best. And let's do But you, but you always, but you always come out. I think I'm a little obsessed. I can get you out of my head. Honestly, I'm trying my best, but you always come back in my mind. Let's do, but you always come back to my mind. And so, now we've got this. This is a completely different rhyme now. And we filled that out with a whole new melody and the whole new kind of syllabic structure. So we've got, I think I'm a little obsessed. I can't get you out of my head. Honestly, I'm trying my best, but you always come back to my mind and. So now we're gonna be following the rhythm and the melody of the first three lines, but we're gonna be changing that M rhyme. So, da -da 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 -da. honestly, I'm trying. I think I'm a little obsessed. I can get you out of my head. Honestly, I'm trying my best, but you always come back to my mind. Yeah. So let's do, da -da 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 -da. let's do every thought I have is with you. Every thought I have is with you. All right, so let's do, every thought I have is with you. Da -da 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 -da. So there's gonna be a ton of words that rhyme with you. We'll just pick one off the list. Uh, let's do, every thought I have is with you. I think let's do I think that we both always knew so we've got you right here rhyming with new right here I think that we both always knew let's see let's do that even when it's all said and through. And then this line is actually gonna continue into that next line, very similar to how we did up here. So we've got full thought, full thought, or we've actually got full thought, half thought, half thought, and now we have to finish that. So we've got every thought I have is with you. I think that we both always knew that even when it's all said and through, and we have to rhyme it with, we have to rhyme it with mine and. Let's see. Actually, let's change this to, but you always come back every time and every thought I have is with you. I think that we both always knew that, and that even when it's all said and through, you'd always be stuck in my mind. Yeah. And then we'll just fill that with like a yeah. A lot of the time you can just kind of end your phrases with a yeah or an and or a yell or whatever you need to to kind of finish that up. So now we've got every time and let's see. Oh my yeah. Okay. So let's kind of play this out. So we've got, let's see. <laughs> So I'm feeling pretty good about those lyrics. Again, they're nothing groundbreaking, but they definitely kind of fit the narrative of the song. And it's easy to just kind of Mad Lib style fill these in uh, with something that's just gonna fill up on the story a little bit. So generally in choruses, I'll go a little bit less 
uh, personal than I do in the verses because to me, the verse is my kind of time to tell my story, expand on my story, really put in personal kind of aspects. And in that chorus that everybody's going to be singing along to, that everybody's going to be stuck in their head, I like to keep that as general as possible. That way other people can relate to that and that way that they'll you know, when that's stuck in their head, it will feel personal to them because they'll just kind of naturally fill that in with whatever thoughts they have. Because if I'm filling it in with a super, super, super personal chorus, um, it it might not be the most relatable thing to a, a bunch of listeners. So now we've got all that written, the next thing I'm gonna do is actually get some vocals tracked in here so we can hear it, and then we'll move on to tip number five. Sweet, so I got some vocals tracked. It's exactly what we just wrote all together. Let's go ahead and take a listen to it, and then we'll break down tip number five. I think I'm a little So let's talk about number five, and that is actually, this is gonna not be writing as much as it is kind of like tracking and engineering, but we're gonna count it anyway, because as the vocalist or as the writer, these are things that you should be throwing out. And that is actually how to fill this in with the vocal arrangement and just really getting the dynamics of the performance right. So in this chorus, you'll see that what we have tracked right here is a lead, and then we've got a bunch of other tracks. So let's just start with that lead. Let's do the bare minimum right here. So you can kind of see how the chorus sounds as a demo. I think I'm a little upset I can't get you out of my head Honestly, I'm trying my best you always come back every time in. So, I know immediately that I'm gonna want to stack those uh, with a left and a right vocal I think I'm a little upset I can't get you out of my head Honestly, I'm trying my best So that's kind of a given on pretty much any chorus ever in pop um, so let's actually move on to the things that are going to be really, really important decisions. And that is, I did want to add in some harmonies right here, and that's just going to be a lower octave. I think I'm a little obsessed. And that just kind of goes the whole way. It's in unison with the lead. It's just down an octave. And I actually played around with doing some harmonies and stuff. And I kind of noticed that since this is a little bit more wordy, this chorus did not benefit from a ton of vocal stacks and a ton of different harmonies. And so that's one thing to kind of keep in mind is not every song will need the Ariana Grande treatment where you have a million different vocals happening. So right now we have a lead, two extra uh, takes of that lead pan left and right, and then two takes of the lower octave. I think I'm a little upset. The next thing I knew I wanted to do was I knew that that you always come back every time man would be important because we're breaking away from that. So once you do a breakaway, that's a really good chance to kind of add some extra vocal production or add a little bit extra dynamics. Um, so for this, I didn't want to track it because again, the harmonies just didn't really sound that great when I would try them. So what I did was I did a wide vocal and a low wide vocal. So we've got this kind of coming in. So just putting those over top of that kind of gave that one extra line a little bit more urgency. And then the last thing that I added for the main vocals was these extra little harmonies right here. And this is where you want to start making your key decisions is I said that the harmonies didn't really work all the way through, but there were different spots that we could kind of add them to give it just a little bit more body. And so you're going to see it on these ending words right here. Basically the rhyme phrases. I think I'm a little obsessed. I can't get you out of my head. Honestly, I'm trying my best, but you always come back every time, man. Every thought I have is with you. I think that we both always know. So when you're writing a chorus, start writing some extra little parts like this that are going to add some dynamics and some extra kind of oomph. And that coming in with that main vocal really just kind of takes out that phrase up a lot. I think I'm a little obsessed. I can't get you out of my head. Honestly, I'm trying my best, but you always... And being able to just pull it in every now and then is really going to make certain words and phrases feel a little bit more important. And then the last thing that I knew that I wanted was I knew that I wanted some shouts under those as well. So we have the harmonies, but I wanted to add a last little bit of sauce. And we have a whole video on how to add choir vocals, and this is basically just doing that. I just tracked all of these. I think this is eight uh, tracks. And what I did was I just yelled them. Every thought I have is with you. I 
think that we both always knew that even when it's all said and through. So let's hear that now. I think I'm a little obsessed. I can get you out of my head. Honestly, I'm trying. And so after you have the vocal really being able to go in and kind of tell the producer or track it yourself and know every harmony that you want to add, every little vocal production, every little extra take or shout, that will actually take that chorus a really, really long way because unless the song is just going to be acoustic with one vocal right down the middle, these are all things that definitely will kind of tie into how people interpret that chorus because if I just leave one vocal just coming right up the center. Honestly, it's going to have no impact. People are not going to know that that's the most important part of the actual song. So being able to kind of go in and fill that in with all of those extra little kind of creative choices is a massive benefit. But that pretty much does it for the five tips. So as you see, we kind of went through picking the idea, picking the lyrical theme, filling out a rhyme scheme, filling out the melodies, actually writing the lyrics, and then we actually went in and started adding some of our own extra vocal production and vocal dynamics into the song to really give us a chorus that we were happy with. So Hopefully this video helped. And that's gonna do it for this video. As you can see, writing a chorus can be a super, super daunting task, but if you can break it down into these five key features of figuring out what kind of theme you want, what style you want your chorus, and then how you just fill in those lyrics and those melodies, everything will kind of come together. And again, everybody's tastes are gonna be different. You might like this chorus, you might hate this chorus, you might have done something totally different, but either way, you're gonna to wanna to follow those five key factors of making sure that what you're putting in is intentional and actually resonates with the rest of the song. If you have any questions, please let us know in the comments below and we will answer those. If you wanna check out any of our other stuff, head to makepopmusic.com. The link is in the description. You can check out all of our courses, sample packs, preset packs. We've got blog posts on there. And let us know what videos you wanna see in the near future because we'll be working on a ton of stuff. We have a lot of new releases coming out for the holiday season. So we're really, really busy working on all of that behind the scenes, but we're super excited. Let us know what you guys want to see next and other than that much love everybody stay safe and peace out I think I'm a little obsessed I can get you out of